is kind of an extra um, um, an extra letter from the author that I wanted to read uh, because it's questions and answers about the eruption of Mount St. Helens. So we know a lot of what happened because the author was really um, specific in his details and told a really interesting story, but I wanted to read this part. So we're gonna get started. Uh, first question, why did I write about the eruption of Mount St. Helens? The eruption of Mount St. Helens in 1980 was one of the most environmentally destructive in the world history. It was the most powerful natural disaster ever recorded in America, more powerful than Hurricane Katrina in 2005 or the San Francisco earthquake in 1906. And yet many people under the age of 30 had barely even heard of it. How could that be? We tend to remember disasters that result in large numbers of human deaths. The St. Helens eruption destroyed 230 miles of wilderness, but became the mountain. But because the mountain was surrounded mostly by forest, it claimed far fewer lives than many other destructive volcanoes. 57 people died in St. Helens. More famous volcanoes like Vesuvius and Krakota killed tens of thousands. But the eruption of St. Helens was very important, and not just because it happened right here in the United States. It was the first volcano that scientists could study closely while it was revving up for eruption. Today, volcano scientists called volcano volcanologists have a much better understanding of volcanoes than they did in 1980. And that is because of the lessons from St. Helens. Question number two, what happened when St. Helens erupted? On the morning of May 18th, Mount St. Helens erupted with the force of one megaton nuclear bomb, which is equal to 10,000 tons of dynamite. The front of the mountain actually shattered apart and collapsed into the rock stumbling down the mountain in a massive avalanche. The, the explosion created a, a cloud of ash, smoke, and gas that shot more than 12 miles up into the sky. It triggered one of history's biggest landslides. It was 50 miles wide. The wave of the mud and debris and melted ice raced down the mountain, swept away bridges, thousands of trees, and long logs, cars, houses, bulldozers, and roads. The eruption spewed a staggering amount of ash, 520 million tons of it, and the ash blew eastward across the United States. In the city of Spokane, Washington, 350 miles away, the ash caused complete darkness. Far away from Montana, ash from... As far away as Montana, ash from St. Helens ruined crops, caused car accidents, and clogged airplane, airplane engines. Question three, did the eruption really take people by surprise? Yes, the eruption was a surprise, and to me, that was the most incredible part of the story. There were so many warning signs, thousands of earthquakes, yes, thousands between March 20th and the eruption on May 18th. There were dozens of stream explosions, some that lasted for hours. Huge cracks formed in the mountain. Near the summit, the mountain was actually bulging out from the pressure inside it. Just two years before, two scientists wrote a research paper warning that St. Helens was likely to erupt in the coming years. And yet, the eruption on the morning of May 18th was a true surprise, even to scientists. The mountain had quieted down in the weeks right before. Most scientists had thought that there was some dramatic warning before it exploded, but the warning never came. One minute the mountain was peaceful, and the next it erupted with a volcano that few... Um, with a violence that few imagined. Are scientists better able to predict eruptions today? Yes, today scientists ha have far better tools for studying volcanoes. They have computer programs that can analyze the amounts of data in seconds. They have lasers that can detect whether molten rock magma is rising up through the volcano. But what has truly changed volcano science was the eruption of Mount St. Helens. Scientists from all around the world have studied every second of the eruption. This work had helped scientists better understand the warning signs that often led to volcanic, volcanic eruptions. Could St. Helens erupt again? Yes. In fact, it already has many times since 1980. Some of the eruptions had released huge clouds of ash in the sky. In 2004, it spewed two, 26 billion gallons of lava. How did they measure that? I wish I knew. But none has come close to the fury of the 1980 eruption. What are the world's most dangerous volcanoes? There are 1,500 volcanoes in the world that could be active. From the lava spewing Kalua of Hawaii and the streaming Katla of Iceland and the quietly quiet, beautiful mountain of Fiji. Um, Mount, uh, beautiful Mount F F Fuji in Japan. 
About 160 of the world's most active volcanoes are located on a horseshoe shape surrounded the Pacific Ocean. This area is called the Ring of Fire. The Cascade Mountain Range where St. Helens is located is part of that ring. Any active volcano is dangerous, but what makes a volcano perilous to humans is mainly its location. Volcanoes located near big cities are far more dangerous than the remote areas. The eruption of Mount St. Helens could have killed thousands if it had been near a more crowded area. And here are some more interesting facts I found out about Mount St. Helens. Height of eruption cloud. The main volcanic cloud rose to be 12 to 15 miles into the sky, into the Earth at, at Earth's atmosphere. Number of earthquakes before the eruption, more than 2,000. Area destroyed by eruption, about 230 square miles, more than three times the size of Washington, D.C. Size of landslide, landslide two, uh, 23 square miles. Depth of landslide, roughly 100 feet. Speed of landslide, 70 to 150 miles per hour. Distance traveled by ash cloud. Ash could have circled the globe three times. Small amounts of ash blew 22,200 square miles. Height of St. Helens before the eruption, 9,677 feet. It was the fifth tallest mountain in the Cascades. Height after the eruption, 8,363 feet. It is now the 14th tallest. Number of bridges destroyed, 27. Miles of highway destroyed, 185. Number of trees destroyed, destroyed roughly 3 million.